It's four o'clock in the morning, and I've come here to get something very special for Nick Nairn to cook in our food van. Hello and a very warm welcome to an early start on Landward. Now, I'm heading to the coast, and another first for Scotland. Once upon a time, nearly all Scottish towns had a fishmonger. Nowadays though, with the rise of the supermarket and convenience food, they're a much rarer sight. But thankfully, they haven't disappeared entirely. John Watson has been a fishmonger here in Largs for over 40 years. And this year, he became the first master fishmonger in Scotland. But he doesn't spend all his time at the shop. Twice a week, John gets up at the ungodly hour of three o'clock in the morning to come here to the Blochairn Fish Market in Glasgow to buy the freshest produce. John, how's it going? Oh, how nice do you doing? I'll just wipe my hand right. first. Nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see you. That's massive. What's that? Ah, it's a big halibut, a wild halibut, 17.5 kilos. Are you buying that? The North sea. I'm going to buy it for the window today. A nice centrepiece. But however impressive his halibut, John's most popular fish is haddock. Biggest seller um, for myself and Lars. My father had five shops up in Greenock, Port Glasgow, and that was predominantly whiting back in the day. But nowadays it's, it's, it's mainly haddock. And how fresh is that then? When, when were they landed? They were probably landed last night. Very fresh. I mean, yeah. they're absolutely stunning fish. Uh, and I say all sustainable fish caught landed at Peterhead. So I was expecting to see, you know, the, the, you know, the market and the auctions and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. obviously this has happened before because there's the, the tickets yeah, there. Yeah, the auction happened up at Peterhead. Uh -huh. I've, I've never been to an auction, to be honest. Have you not? Never in been all to an these auction. Years? All these years, no. My dad went to the auctions down in the old salt market, but then that stopped before I even started in the trade. See you later. Fish collected, it's a 50 minute trip back to Larks and the start of the working day proper. In June this year, John travelled to London to receive the title of Master Fishmonger from the worshipful company of fishmongers one of the capital's ancient city guilds. It's a scheme that recognises craftsmanship and a commitment to responsible and sustainable practices. John, tell me about this award, what is it? The uh, award is to try and get uh, fishmongers accredited to get more young people into the business. You get tested, so you've got uh, 12 um, different kinds of fish to fill out, different processes to do. You get uh, two interviews, put in front of a panel, down in the guild, and if you pass that, then you become a master fisherman. So how big a deal is it for you to get this? It's a really big deal for me. Um, the first one in Scotland to receive the award, um, and it'd be great if some more fishmongers um, put in for the award too, because there's some, some other great fishmongers in Scotland. And one of those is John's nephew, Connor. Tutored by his uncle, he can skin and fillet a fish in 45 seconds. So is it important for you to have Connor, you know, one of your family actually? I think it's good because it's a dying art, you know, and probably Connor's one of the youngest in Scotland, I would say, I can, I can fill it as, as, to a standard. Uh -huh. He's really good, he picked up really quick, uh -huh. and now he's just about as fast as me. Right. Just about as fast as me. And it's the master who's going to prepare me some haddock fillets to take to Nick in the Lambert food van. I'll stand back at a safe distance, John. Yes, so. ripping and skinning, this is the first part of the process. It's an angel cut, this, because it's got like wee wings on the side of it. Uh -huh. I'm going a wee bit slower than normal, just so as you can see. So how long did it take you to learn this then? To rip, skin and fill it takes about six months. Really? Yeah, and then after that it's the speed. So it takes about maybe two or three years to get up to the, the correct speed. John is no slow coach. With Connor's help, he can clear a box of 140 haddock in just over half an hour. Okay, well, what? But I only need four. There you go, take it. Nice, cheers, thanks a lot. Okay. Bye bye. Or should I say, Nick only needs four. And you can see what he does with them later in the programme.
Earlier in the programme, I picked up some haddock from Scotland's master fishmonger. There you go, Nicky. Nice, cheers, thanks a lot. I'm staying in Largs and taking my catch to Nick in the Lambert food van, where he's going to rustle up a tasty treat for the crowds braving the somewhat blustery conditions. Can he ring the changes on Scotland's favourite fish after I brought him some of its freshest? Look Abs at them. They are beautiful. Spanking fresh, opalescent. Smell. No smell. No smell at all. Beautiful. So what we're going to do is going to make homemade goujons with a cheats tartar sauce. Okay. So we start with ordinary uh, mayonnaise and we tart it up a bit. See what you did there? Tartar yeah. it up Tartar a bit. Tartar it yeah. up a bit, okay. yeah. Good, yeah. So this is just ordinary shop bought mayonnaise, and to that I'm going to add one egg uh, yolk. Now you can probably hear the pinging noise there. We've got some hot oil there. That's just... Dijon mustard is the next thing. And a little bit of lemon zest. Right. Well, that, see what you're doing, that tilting? That's a very good. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to whisk. Okay. Actually, why don't you whisk? I'll whisk. So this makes it taste homemade. You should never make mayonnaise with all olive oil. It's way too strong. But just whisking a bit in, makes a huge difference. Uh, ah. I mean, I just taste that homemade mayonnaise. Okay. So, tartar sauce, but these are diced uh, gherkins. So, like so, yep. Finely chopped shallot. Shallot, okay. okay. And that's shallot. shallot. Okay, yes. Last, but not least. I mean, really. A nice bit of dill. Finely chopped dill and parsley together. Okay. It's looking good, actually, I have to say. This is best when it's done sort of freshly, so the, 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 the herbs are added on the day you're going to eat it, because they lose their, their pungency and their colour if you leave them sitting It, for it really smells fantastic. It does, doesn't it? So, I'd like you to taste homemade tartar sauce. Oh, that's, oh, that's really, really good. Oh, my goodness. That's packed with flavour. Would you ever know that that was shop-bought mayonnaise? Absolutely not. No. Ah. You've worked some magic on it, I have to say. So we're going to panny that fabulous haddock that you brought. It does look great, doesn't it? Cut in half, and each one cut into a goujon. Right, so here's how we do the panny. So we start off into the flour. And we seasoned toss flour. Them, seasoned flour. Well seasoned salt and pepper. Then into the egg wash, and then finally into the... But this, is, this is a good job for you. You can do the bread crummy. And you get a little system going. Okay, um, okay. And these these are delicious. They're like little fingers. And the breadcrumbs we're using are uh, Japanese panko breadcrumbs. So they're really big and sharp and they get uh -huh. that lovely jaggy kind of feel in your mouth. Not long now. They're Not long. They're quiet out there, aren't they? They're very quiet. So in they go and you should get a nice little sizzle. And we want to cook them until they are just pale kind of golden. Not too dark but not peely-wally. All you can smell is the kind of the, the, the breadcrumbs cooking out. Right? There's, yeah. no, there's no smell of fish at all. Traditionally, this would be done with sole. Uh -huh. um, however, I'm going to say something here that's maybe a little bit controversial. Yeah. I think that when haddock is fresh, spanking fresh like this, uh -huh. it's the best white fish you'll ever get. Oh, really? Better than turbot, best than halibut, yep. Wow. But it has to be super spanking fresh. Should we taste a bit of that in the meantime? Do you think that's going to be cool enough yet? <laughs> that will be hot. Oh. Uh -huh. uh, does it dance on your tongue? <laughs> that is so delicious. Yes. Unbelievably nice. My goodness, that's amazing. So fresh. It's, it's really it's, tasty. It's, it's, a, it's a rare little treat, this. Look at them all, they're all salivating out there. Good, well, what, rightly they should be. <laughs> $4.99. There's no markup in the food van. All we want from the people of Largs is their opinion. Now, hey, madam, would you like to try one of my haddock and goujons? Oh, very much. Right. Absolutely delicious. delicious. Oh, yeah. Really crispy, beautifully yeah. fresh. Well, I'm not a huge fish lover, but I could eat that very easily. It's just perfect. Isn't it great? It is fabulous. Now, sir, are you a fan of uh, the fish and chips? It did not die in vain. Yeah, we're big fish eaters in Largs. I can't double dip, can I? Hey, I'll go in. put the other end in. There you go. Margie. Crispy, flavoursome. Very nice. Flaky inside. Lovely and juicy. Spot on. What more do you want? Do you know the first supper? I was a bit nervous about 
feeding the people from Largs fish. I mean, they've got fish and chips coming out of their ears here. But they clearly loved it. Somebody said the best fish they'd ever had. Really? Yeah. I think it was close for me. It's very fancy fish fingers from you, I have to say. <laughs> fish fingers. <laughs> very tasty they were too. And lots more tasty things coming up on the next programme. So join us again next time. In the meantime, from all of us here in Largs, thank you so much for your company. Bye for Goodbye. now. Goodbye.